All right, so we've looked at how to add multiple visualizations. But again, our, if our visualizations exist with no context, it's going to be very hard to understand what we're seeing. Sometimes that context can be within the visualization. If you're making a print project, you can have lots of text, you can have annotations and all that stuff. But um, one of the powers of working online is that we can build all of this stuff right into the web page. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, web design, HTML, and CSS here. If you've done that stuff before, that's super cool. And you can probably just kind of quickly look through this and you'll understand what's going on. If you've never done any of that stuff, don't sweat it. We're going to talk about some of the basics, but you won't need to know, uh, you know a whole lot about how to do full on web design. Um, so here's the example we're going to make. Um, it's using my ice cream data from before. So here's my chart JS visualizations, interactive. You know, they're all part of a web page, which is great. Here's my scatter plot once again interactive, um, but you'll also notice it includes a title, subtitle, um, credits. We can include paragraphs of text. Um, you can intersperse these things. And then it also has a footer down here, um, which includes data sources and credits, whatever else that you want to add. So let's look at how we're going to make this. Um, the first thing is most of our work, well, all of our work really is happening not in our code here, or rather it's happening in, in a different file. So there's nothing here really to see. We covered all this in the multiple visualizations um, example last time. The real work is going to happen here in this index file. This is the web page that actually displays your project. And you can think of, and so this is HTML, and you can think of this as the nouns of the web. It's the things. So it's um, headlines and paragraphs and images and sections and links and all of that kind of stuff. We'll also take a look at this style.css uh, file. Um, and you can think of CSS as the adjectives. This describes how those things appear. So their size, their placement, their um, colors, all of that kind of stuff. Though most of the work will happen over here in the index file. So there's also, oh, this is our example. So let's, I uh, have a blank one kind of prepared here for us. Um, so here's this file, the index file. And normally, you know, we haven't had to touch this really. We want to skip everything up here. And uh, there's a note here, additional elements can be added here and no additional elements after this. This is going to ensure everything looks correct. So you want to make sure everything is inside this wrapper section like this. And then I've gone ahead, this is a template I've made for you so that it's a little easier. Of course, if you want to change this or make your own, Go for it, that's great. Um, I've made three sections, a header, a main section, and a footer that will allow you to kind of quickly add some stuff. So let's start with our, um, our header. And um, we talked about this actually a little bit in the first video of this section where we were talking about um, XML data, which HTML is based on. Um, but you'll notice everything is in these uh, pointy brackets, these carrots, um, and they define different stuff. And I'll put a link in the description to a place where you can look up a lot of those. Um, but a very common one is H1, H2, H3, H4, et cetera. Those are headers of different sizes. Um, and so I'm going to make this my title. I'm going to call this ice cream consumption. And then we need this closing H1 tag. And you do have to make sure you have those closing tags. And everything in between there will be part of a headline. So now if I save this and run it again, now we get now we're having some errors because we haven't added our canvases yet for our visualizations, but we can see it says ice cream consumption, which is great. Let's also add a subtitle in H2. So this will be a little bit smaller. And I'm going to say this is a visualization essay on summer days. Of course, you could leave this off if you didn't want to have that. Oh, the other thing you'll notice is that we do have to save before running this. Um, so I just tried to running it now and we don't see that change. So you do need to save it. And then when you run it, you'll see this pop up. And then we can also add a paragraph. So I'm going to put um, a byline here. Once again, you could put whatever you want. So we'll say March 2021 and paragraph. So this is all inside that header section. And this really quickly kind of defines that. Um, and you, know, you could add whatever you want up here. Um, and all the sizing, bold, stuff like that, that's all set in the CSS, which we'll look at in a little bit. OK, then the main section. So this is where your real project is going to kind of go. And you could include a lot of stuff here. But one thing we might want to include is an image. So I'm just going to copy paste some of this stuff here. 
Um, so most tags in HTML do have an opening tag and a closing tag marked with a slash, um, but images are one of the exceptions. Uh, but we do have an additional parameter here, which is the source. This is where is that image stored? In this case, I made a folder, which you can do by clicking up here, create folder. And then I uploaded, just like you did with your data, um, I uploaded this image file here. You could also include a link here just to somewhere else on the web if you wanted. Um, and once again, I'll save this. And now we get this really nice um, image here, which looks pretty cool. Um, did I screw something up? I feel like that should, oh, no, that's correct. Okay, so we've got that image. That, uh, that line was in a weird place. I thought, psych, never mind, that looks good. Uh, then we can include some text. So I am using this placeholder text. It's this thing called lorem ipsum. Um, it's basically nonsense Latin. It's a good placeholder just to visualize stuff. And again, if I save this, now we get this paragraph. Um, it's everything between this P tag and this closing P tag. And again, I'm all within the main section here. So we're doing everything inside there. Um, let's say, so we've got this image, maybe we've got some introductory text and then we can add our first visualization. So canvas, remember this is gonna be our ID. So uh, mine is called chart one, probably not um, the most descriptive, but if you wanted to know more about how to do that, you could check out the previous video on multiple visualizations. So there's my visualization embedded within this page. Um, and oh yeah, so that, that's super easy. Uh, there's an additional thing we might want to add for our visualization so that people have a little more context. You could do that in a paragraph, but there's another um, object or a tag called fig caption. This is a caption for figures like visualizations. And um, don't forget the close. And we can put in here some info about this visualization. Maybe it's a really quick thing that just says ranking of the most popular ice cream flavors. Oops, I didn't save it. There we go. And so you can see down here. And now maybe then we want to get rid of this title. So we could go into our visualization. This is flavors. We'll turn off the title here. So now there's a couple benefits to doing this. One is that um, we, I think it looks a little nicer in this context. Maybe it doesn't for yours. Um, and then the other benefit is that the text in our visualizations is not actually text that the computer can read, uh, whereas this is. So if someone is using a screen reader and can't, um, if they're visually impaired, um, then they won't maybe be able to get that information from your chart, but you could include stuff here. I'll leave that up to you how you wanna do that. As a figure caption, we can add some additional paragraphs. Let's add one now. And let's add another visualization. And I think this one is called chart two. And there we go, some more text, another visualization. Again, these are all embedded into this project, which is pretty fun. Um, we can add a caption as well. Let me just add that here. And now we get it below which I think looks really nice. Um, let me just get into one more paragraph, just kind of balance this out. Again, you know, there's lots and lots of stuff that um, you could add here. You could add images, you could add, um, you know, additional visualizations. You could make little illustrations or infographics that maybe um, talk about some of the details here or explain something further. Lots of ways you could think about kind of building a story with all these elements. Then there's one more section, the footer. Um, and again, you know, you can choose whatever you want to put down here, but that's going to go below this line. And um, I think there's two things we probably want to have in our footer. The first is our data sources. Where did this data come from? So I'm going to do this with an H2 tag. So it's a headline size number two, data sources. Like this, and again, we'll run that so we can see our little label. Can you see that? Yes, cool, just want to make sure. Um, and then for our sources, we can do this actually as a list. So it's going to be a paragraph like that. And then there's two types of lists. There's ordered lists, which are numbered, and there's unordered lists, which are bullets. And we're going to do that one here. So we're going to say UL, unordered list, and then end this. And once again, you know, if this is all like super new to you, 
you can for sure just copy this as a template, as an example, and fill in your own stuff there so that we don't have to remember how to do all this stuff. And then for within the list, we can create items and those would be lines on our list. And again, I'm gonna grab this here. So my first is from yougov.com and the second one is from, ah, it's from Notre Dame. So now if we run this, we can see our two sources here, but I'd like to make these links. I want us to be able to follow them to the actual data source. And to do that, we use this tag A, which stands for anchor. And everything inside this A tag then becomes a link. And our uh, the way we specify where that link goes to is this keyword href. And then in quotes, we put our link. Again, I'm just gonna grab that like this. Um, so our, it's a link. This is uh, the href is the URL that it goes to. The text that's going to be the link is all inside that a tag. And now when I see it, um, you can see that it's uh, changed color and it's got an underline. When I hover over it, it changes color. And if we were to click this um, like this, we can see it opens that page, which is great. Let's add that to the Notre Dame one as well. I'm just, again, going to copy paste. Uh, you know, this is a little hard because it would be great if we could use an editor um, that where we could just kind of edit it like a Word document and do this stuff. But unfortunately, there's no way that I know of to add Chart.js into that. Um, you know, there's a trade-off here. But I think hopefully these are pretty straightforward. And then I'm also going to add another, um, let's just copy paste this. I'm going to add one more list. So it's in its own, oops, it's in another paragraph. Is it? No, we can leave that part of the same paragraph actually. Um, and this is our credits. So this is who made this thing, tools that you used. Um, so in this case, you know, I'm listing myself, the role that I played, maybe you're working on a team and you wanna like explain that. Um, and then I like to list tools, especially open source ones that are being used in the project like Chart.js. So here we can see um, that only the word Chart.js here is the link, the rest of it is not. And I think this looks pretty sweet. Um, so again, of course, there's a lot more HTML you could do here, and I will leave some links for you to check out other options, but this should be enough for your project, I think. Um, let's take a quick look now at the CSS file. So if HTML is the nouns and CSS is the adjectives, this allows us to make changes. And I've annotated here um, in this template things that I think you might want to change. So the first is fonts. Um, if anyone's interested in using different fonts in this, talk to me and we can you know, we can search out here. Um, normally these need to be fonts that are installed on the user's computer. Um, and you can specify fallbacks. So if Helvetica Noia, which is the default for Chart.js is not available, then it'll use Helvetica, if not Arial, if not whatever default sans serif font. I've also set the default font size um, and everything else is relative to that font size. Images, you probably won't want to change, but I've set them to be 100% of our container here that they're in. Canvas, you really shouldn't need to change that, but you could for spacing reasons. Same with the wrapper and actually these sections. You know, you could change the text alignment of our header, for example, to be left or right or center. I think I like center. Um, I'm also making this byline here italic. So that's kind of nice. Footer stuff. Um, and then here's all the other font sizes and things like that. So the figure caption is in italics list stuff and then links. So you could change the color of your links if you want as well, um, maybe to match the style of your project. Um, you certainly could style stuff other than what's here, but this is really meant to be a template for you to start with. There will be a template for you to work from that's got all this stuff without the extra, you know, my examples here. But hopefully this gives you some ideas. And I realize for a lot of you, you haven't done HTML before. That's totally cool. This is actually a really great way to get started, I think. Um, and you'll see really quickly the power of being able to combine all these things into a singular project. Oh, one more thing. Um, and that is that this is responsive. So this will change depending on um, what platform you're viewing it on. So if you're on a phone or a tablet, it's going to, it should work really nicely. Um, and if it gets bigger, obviously it's gonna expand to fill. 
So this is uh, hopefully should work really well to display your project on a range of platforms. Again, something that print or even like an image is not necessarily going to be able to do as easily. Plus, of course, it's interactive and all of that stuff.